we're going to talk, quickly talk about this. So this is a tweet that somebody shared. Oh yeah, this is a tweet from Business, business Teshno regarding the whole thing that's happened with Asquith, um, you know, the founder of Lobster Ferryman, who's going through a bit of a mad one in terms of him being accused of being a bit of a sex pest or being an abuser or being a harasser, whatever it may be, by one of his um, artists or former artists that was on a label who kind of came over from Glasgow, was it Glasgow or somewhere in Scotland to kind of pursue her DJing and production production career and then through whatever nonsense he decided that was opportunity to try a thing and it went really really badly and then of course she felt really uncomfortable and decided to move back and then basically expose and air him out for the nastiness that he allegedly did he obviously denies it said he didn't do it but still you know the narcissist is out there i remember mentioning before that the thing that annoyed me about that story was number one it sounded like the girl was all about herself right it sounded like she didn't really have much support um there was that whole clout thing as well about being afraid of speaking up because the person's really big and at the time Asquith had just started or in the last couple of years Asquith has just kind of blown up in terms of profile and he's now become really big off the back of his meme page that he has on Instagram that people follow and all this sort of stuff I think it's called Cat Squeef or something is it Cat Squeef? I think it's Cat Squeef so I can understand you know it's really sad to hear and heartbreaking because clearly this person felt like they had no way out to kind of speak about what happened until they obviously plucked up the courage to kind of speak about it but I was speaking about it and I was saying the thing that annoys me is that not her, more so the people around the scene who know of Asquith personally, who know of that label personally, who've heard the stories, not saying anything prior. I think the lack of bravery of people, especially the ones in the industry, in the scene who know what's going on behind the scenes, but don't want to say nothing, essentially leads to victims like this having to suffer. They're the ones that suffer the most because they don't know. They're coming, you know, they're coming naively down, thinking this person's going to be professional, thinking it's going to be this opportunity to pursue an interest that you want to do, especially if you know or like somebody's persona online. You just assume they're going to be cool. You come down with all the good intentions in the world and then you get taken advantage of and you get kind of caught off guard because no one has shared that news online or been honest and said, hey, this person's actually like this. Watch out for this, watch out for that. And if you get in business with them, it's up to you. But at least you're aware of what's happening well, you, you know what you're kind of walking into and i mentioned in general that there's in general when i think when it comes to the scene especially in kind of dance music and nightclubs i think and dance culture or whatever it may be that i'm interested in or nightlife and clubs and stuff i feel like there's a real lack of bravery overall it's, except for the victims the victims are the ones that are always the bravest the ones that have the most to lose but when it comes to industry people who actually work behind the scenes it's truly disgusting and truly awful how few of them are willing to step up and speak up for things that they think are wrong and I said beforehand, it was really disturbing too, because I'd imagine, this is me just guessing though, but I'd imagine a lot of people who actually work behind the scenes, people who work for booking agencies, people, people who work for, you know, event production people, people who work uh, in management companies, people who work at record labels. I'd imagine there's a few number of girls there or few number of women who have experienced and seen have come through everything. So these people hear stories. They probably had their own stories that they kind of had to combat or, you know, areas that they've grown up in where the abuse was maybe rampant and they had to kind of navigate out of it. But they know, they know what's going on. So in an industry that's full of, of loads of professional women working in the background to help, to, to help the industry keep chugging along for those people just to kind of remain quiet and not say anything um is really really horrible to be honest and again like i said the people that suffer are the potential victims that come in all naive and open-eyed um you know trying to pursue their dreams little do they know they're walking into a fucking snake pit and this is a good example of it with the jimmy asquith thing because now look people are sharing stories about him from 2019 about him being a little bit weird and stuff so you know it's just horrendous that these things don't get spoken about more openly or even more op maybe not openly to us in the pub but at least in the industry at least at events sharing with people or djs other people on the label and saying hey by the way keep your eye on this da, 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 da. just so people are aware of what they're walking into but this screenshot is courtesy of business Tesno. it says the following it's from a person called mitch lamb and they say this our crew can bear a house social book jimmy asque for a show in august um April, sorry in april 2019 what followed was the worst experience any of us can recall when dealing with a touring artist. As Quiff got incredibly intoxicated during his set, acted inappropriately with several of our female crew members, even kissed a punter even though we understood he had a partner at the time. Jesus, the cherry on top of this bullshit behaviour was me getting a call at 4am from my local club to come and collect Jimmy from the bathroom as he'd K-holed himself. 
if you know anything about K hole, you know that he must have took a fair amount to to go in the K hole. Usually, from my experience, you have to kind of be a bit excessive and not do him at kind of precise intervals for you to kind of go over the edge. And um, once you're in that K hole, it can be really kind of distressing at times, kind of scary, especially if you're in a nightclub, especially if you're intoxicated. So you can only imagine what condition he was in. And obviously, this is the picture and proof of the party itself um, for anyone doubting. And it continues, it says here, in the toilet cubicle and refused to come out. No shame on getting a bit ketty, of course, because we all do it. But, and, but by all approach, he was rude, aggressive to the venue staff when they checked in on him. He was so messy that taxis refused to collect him and he was being verbally abusive to our... Imagine being honestly, like... I always say it before, don't I? DJing is one of the best things i've ever done as a hobby and as a kind of semi-professional job thing right but obviously since the pandemic has closed and things have been open again since the pandemic has kind of quiet that's a bit open again my gigs have kind of dried up essentially and i'm just having to flip and stream stuff from pirate right kind of sad but hey make do what you got and i'm trying to pursue it now to to some degree but it's always distressing when you hear these stories because you think to yourself like these guys are so fortunate to be able to play for people who actually want to see them. Number one, because I've still have not had that luxury. Most of the places I go and play in bars and clubs, I'm just basically someone playing background music, right? People are just, you know, you're just trying not to annoy people and make sure that they buy drinks and stay. Yeah, just that's all you're doing. But no one's coming out to see you because you're not known. No one gives a fuck about you. You're not playing on big stages and whatnot. So these people are playing in places where people are coming to see them. They've got their names on big font in the flyers, sometimes in bold, sometimes at the top of the flyer. People are paying money, tickets to come and see you. They're thinking about what to what to wear to come see you. They're pre-gaming before to come see you. They're inviting friends to come and see you. They're making sure their phone is charged to come see you. All this stuff, taking time off work, uh, booking a nanny, blah, 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 blah. And then you go and number one, you get super fucked up, which I don't agree with. I've always approached DJing as a kind of thing of where I try to do them all, most of them sober, um, especially not drugged up. That's crazy. You can maybe have a drink, but doing drugs and stuff while you're playing just doesn't make any sense. Provide a really good show doesn't matter if you're playing for one person or flipping 100 so that people can feel like oh you put on a really good show i'd like to come see you again but it's all about being professional so they'd got that opportunity and instead of kind of providing a good show having a good time um even having a good relationship with the promoters right making sure that you're in the state to talk and communicate with the promoters and you know thank them for how for the opportunity to come down maybe share a word or two with some fans who come and see you whatever it may be just enjoy the moment soak it all in before you hop on another plane and go somewhere else you then go and do all this nonsense i never get it i really don't the ones who get all the opportunities always take it for granted it's really really shambolic and the thing that's really funny or really weird about it is that we all come from the same place it doesn't matter if you're a you know a really bait person like amelia the lens amelia lens sorry or a peggy Goo or charlotte the wit or sven var or whatever it may be called we all came from the same place we all came from a place of playing on belt drives on midi players on crappy cdjs you know on a flipping laptop whatever it may be and you start off small and you grow build slowly you build up but you always remember those terrible gigs where no one turned up where no one danced where people get asking for beyonce we all have to start from that kind of place so to start from that place and then get to the higher up places and take it for granted it's just it doesn't make any sense to me it's beyond it's beyond it continued um no shit we get da, da, da. the next slide says the uh, what's that sorry uh, let's continue there uh he was being verbally abusive to our crew as we tried to help him back to his room we finally managed to get him back to the hotel but i'm almost certain it's only because jimmy thought he was going to be able to sleep with one of our female crew members that was helping us walk him home that was definitely not happening and our female crew member was disgusted by his behavior once sucked into his accommodation he called us cunts and threatened to bash us all he then proceeded to miss his flight back overseas in the morning and had to cancel a panel appearance he was booked for that day we reported all his behaviour to the touring agency who booked us with and pledged we would never deal with him again. Sadly, we are not surprised by the reports of his grooming and inappropriate behaviour around women. Jimmy, if you are reading this, fuck you. Oh my God. <laughs> we still talk about this night to this day and about how much of a dickhead you are. You're not welcome back in Canebra. Good riddance. So again, this is the issue I have. No, why didn't you speak up about this at the time? I know you report this to the agency and stuff, but why don't you share this thread at the time so that people were aware? Because this would have gone viral and that could have gone viral to the point where it was shared and kind of, you know, broadcast in the circles of whoever else would come down and want to join Lobster Fucking Theremin and they could see, oh shit, this is what I'm dealing with. And then they could decide if they wanted to 
you know, walk into a snake pit or not. But I just feel bad for the lady that, you know, was at the hands of him and suffered that abuse because essentially she had no idea. You're coming from a completely different place in, in the world. You don't know what's going on in our scene, intrinsic, like, you know, the, 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 in, the kind of... Um, uh, no intrinsic the, the kind of you know the, the minutiae of what's going on in the scene you have no idea and you're just walking in kind of naive hoping for the best and then you end up kind of meeting one of the worst people that you can meet as a first point of contact and then you're here alone as well on top of that it must be absolutely horrible and also have we heard anything officially from the back of this nothing about him about getting booked and stuff i checked his flipping ra recently actually the last appearance i saw was october something and that got cancelled um you know and again you know a local promoter had to get fucked over that because you know they put on the event you have to pay in terms of you know booking the venue or deposit you probably lose if you book it if you cancel a certain amount of time beforehand so you know everyone has to suffer off the back of sin again like i mentioned before the people on the label who had no idea what was going on or who are just working as artists they have to suffer too because that whole lobster frame and name has been kind of sullied off the back of this it's all nonsense and the thing that he could have done to be a real good head and a really good leader was just decide, hey, I'm going to back away from the label and write a statement where he's basically saying, hey, this label has nothing to do with me anymore. It's about these people, the representative of it. Don't associate my name with this. This is them. I don't want to kind of jeopardize their careers. I'm going to back away from the label and this person's going to take control of that. That person's going to take control of this. Um, please support as much as you can while I deal with this issue privately or through the courts. Something like that. But instead of in his statement, he just kept fighting for himself, fighting for himself, kind of, you know, basically um you know self-absorbed narcissism selfishness whatever it may be called but whatever it did it did kind of go a long way to show that you know that's that's the kind of minerals of somebody that would do the thing that he basically got a letter of you would imagine allegedly i don't know anything so don't come and sue me but you know what i mean right it's a distancing himself to the label at the first point of those allegations coming out so to give everybody in the label a chance to you know gather their thoughts and to think about what they're going to do and not put them in awkward position you don't you make it all about you and look at this just a random comment here from somebody says I remember reading a review of a show he played a few years ago where he K-holed on stage Dex went into emergency loop and his friend had to come on stage and try to mix for him while he was getting thrown out and I actually remember hearing this story about somebody else who did I hear this story about it must have been who did I hear it about I heard the story about somebody oh it must have been about Richie Ahmed or something one of those people I think it was him was it Richie Hamid? I don't know. Allegedly it was somebody. One of those people. Allegedly. I don't know anything. Don't kind of consume me for fucking defamation. I have no idea. I'm just talking about rumours I saw online. You know, I'm a nobody, please. Um, another one says, yeah, I know these are serious allegations, but I can't help but laughing at the Australian is offended by the word cunt. Who? He's going to still showing up at Belly London, but I'm saying later this month too. Don't worry, Jack Master. Oh, okay. Don't want to talk about that one don't gather people in but yeah you know what i mean um essentially the the scene is really really toxic people don't speak up and in the end you know innocent victims who come into the game you know innocent and don't really know what they're doing don't really know the scene too well are still navigating through it and are kind of young in their career have to suffer off the back of it it's absolutely disgusting but again hopefully justice will prevail and something will happen off the back of that you can only hope you can only 